we what's going on youtube it's donnie b all day so i'm going to tell you guys a little something that probably you wouldn't expect to be said right there's a there's a knife reviewer out there a guy from australia named the concerned aussie who just got over 100 we did a video i shot him out and i said please get him that this guy deserves to be over 100 you guys got him over 100 and i appreciate it and here's the thing a lot of people would say dude Ooh, light. Um, they say, why do you want this guy over? He has talked negatively about your knife designs, which is bad. Which is bad. What could bad for me or bad for the? No, it's not. It's not bad. Um, the guy bought a knife. Something happened, and he talked about it. He was honest as honest can be, and he even broke down why the knife had an issue. And he's just not happy that it has an issue, right? And he he did it respectfully. He did it honestly. And he, he did it exactly the way a person should air it out. And he did it publicly. And he did it publicly because it happened. So a lot of people are, you know, somebody came to me and they said, dude, I can't believe this guy's bashing, blah, blah, blah. He's not bashing. He's just telling. That's it. He has a story that's true. He's telling the story, but he's also being very honest about why the story happened. So that's why we're going to talk about heat treat today. Um, there's two major kinds of heat treat. You have through heat treat and you have differential heat treat. Um, differential heat treats are going to be found on in companies like um, Tops, Tops Knives, who a lot of people swear by. You know, Tops use differential heat treat. And what a differential heat treat is, I'm going to bring out the preacher because this is the knife that concerned Aussie had a, a concern with. Um, but he he uh, had an issue with the tip, right? And he had a tip fold over on him. Now, what a differential heat treat is, is they heat treat the edge really hard so you have a nice, firm, solid edge. But then as it goes up, it the heat treat gets softer, right? They have a soft spine. That's why with top knives, you don't use the spine to um to strike ferro rods and they make it very well known because you're gonna end up caving in the spine and you're gonna get a bunch of little marks and that's not gonna work and they tell you that right out right straight from the straight from the get-go tops knives will tell you do not do not strike ferro rods with our knives because they are not made for it. it's a differential heat treat what it does is it leaves the spine really soft and that gives the blade a it, it helps for impact it helps take away stress on it on the user but b it helps from um, it helps from snapping the blade. So while a differential heat treat you can get a bend in, it's very very rare that you're just going to completely break your blade off. Right? It's not going to snap in half so easily. And and the way you can look at it, and then there's also you have like a um, a spring a spring treat. It's called like a springy treat. And you'll see like a lot of medieval swords. What they'll do is. They're, they're, it's made of called spring steel, right? Spring steel is made to flex and then come back. Your leaf springs in your cars and trucks are spring steel. It's got a bow and then it straightens and it doesn't stay straight and it doesn't snap in half. It just snaps right back. Um, over time though, what's going to happen is your leaf springs are going to start to sag. Doo -doo 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 -doo. So over time, yes, you are going to lose some of that spring. The same thing with a, with a differential heat treat in a knife. Eventually you're going to, you know, depending on what you're doing with it and how much impact it's taking to where it's going to, you know, uh, to flex and come back. And it's so microscopic. A lot of times, like you won't see it in a, in a knife like this. If I'm hitting it, you're not going to see it flexing and coming back. Well, cause it's that thick, but if it was thin, if I did this at like an eighth of an inch, generally I'd be able to hit it and you'd be able to see it do this. Sometimes you'll, you'll throw a knife and you'll see the knife hit something. Go boing, 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 boing. It's got a spring or a differential heat treat, right? Where a through heat treat means it's just as hard here as it is here. Now, what that does is it makes it to where it's not going to bend at all. That's you throw it into something and it's going to poof without no wiggle. But what it means is you have more of a, uh, a chance of snapping the blade under direct distress. So with, with something like this, this is all soft right here. It's all soft. Not like I can bite it soft. You'll snap your teeth in half. I guarantee you that. But it's soft considering, right? So you've seen every video I do on this, every video scab from Choir Boys Cutlery, go sub to him. Um, every video we do, we do uh, right there. 
And after smashing it, we show the knife. Like I can show you this thing is dead straight. The tip is very good. The tip is very good, as a matter of fact. Um, it's a really, really well-made knife, and it's made in a specific way, in a specific manner. What pro The problem is people don't understand it. And one of the things that I really love about Concerned Aussie is when he reached out to the Kukri house to say, hey, you know, this is what happened, they explained to him about the tip, like when he damaged his tip. And the way he did it, and this is something like when I go out to test a knife, I don't test a knife to show you how I'm going to use the knife in real life. I test the knife a little bit extra. I do things that I'm not going to normally do, right? But it's just to show you that it can do it so you don't have to. You don't have to find out that way. If you, if I took this knife and used it as it's intended and I went out there and I said, oh great, I got to got to cut up some some pine trees and things like that so I can so I can make a fire and eat in the woods. Okay, that's good. Now, the problem that I like concerned Aussie has, he lives in Australia and the trees out there, they're like petrified forest trees. They are as hard as you can get. I mean, it's pretty tough. It, it, that stuff, it's, I feel bad for him because he can't just go ahead and hack through a tree like a normal person. That guy, he's hacking through a piece of iron with a piece of steel. You know what I mean? So I get that. I get that 100%. But what he did to bend the tip, and he is, he's not a liar. He's not a liar. So he wasn't going to hide it. He, he wasn't going to say, oh, I swung the swung the tip into the leaf off a tree and it bent. No, he took his knife and he swung it into a steel drum right into the tip and he bent the tip and he didn't snap it off. It, it was just a bend. It just caved in a little bit right here. Now with a differential heat treat, what that means is if you hit something and you bend, that means in the field, like let's say combat, because remember the people who make this, these are Gurkhas. They make it the same fashion they've been making um, war winning knives forever. They, they're they the most brutal and, and recognized uh, military fighting force altogether, like ever. The Gurkhas were just known to be the ones that you don't mess with, right? They, they came, the British lost so many battles to the Gurkhas. They finally just joined forces. They said, screw it. We can't beat them. Join them. Um, so those Kukris have been made forever, making them the same way. If a Gurkha's out there in the in, in, in combat and war, and he does something in his knife bends, rather than break, he can straighten it out. And it goes just like if you look at the Samurai. Samurai use differential heat treating. The spine of a samurai sword is actually soft. That's why they bend. You can grab a samurai sword and bend it with your hands. You bend it too far, it's going to stay bent. You bend it not too far, it's going to snap back. That's what a differential heat treat is going to do. In, a, in, in combat, if a samurai was swinging his, his katana and it, catch, it catches a bend, he has, when he has time, he can take it over his knee, boop, and straighten it out enough to keep on fighting. Where... Now you take like a medieval sword and depending on how the spring temper is, because it's tempered all the way through, if you break one in half, well, now you have a dagger with a flat part. So that's why the differential heat treat is the way it is. It, it comes from history, from war, and it's not, and, and they say, well, modern knife making and blah, blah, blah. Well, Topps Knives is pretty freaking modern and they're pretty good at what they do and they use the same kind of heat treat as something like you find in Nepal. Then I, then people say, oh, well, then go buy knives from, from Knives by Hand. Well, guess who makes Knives by Hand's knives? Uh -uh. Um, so so it's, it's just the way it is. That That's what the heat treats are for. That's what they do. Um, they're made soft on purpose from here to here, hard on purpose from here to here, and then it's kind of middle of the road in the middle of the road. So I know that if I was to if I was hacking away at something and I hit a stone or a metal fence and I bent my tip, I can take a rock and grind it straight. If I snap the tip, guess what? Now I have to reprofile the whole thing. So there, there's a, there's actually a reason behind it. There, you know, like scab, you'll see scabs knives in, in perfect working order. Um, he's never hit a steel drum concerned Aussie. I'm, I'm, I'm nabbing at you. Um, and he, he's never, and he doesn't have, the wood, like he'll heat, pre uh, scab hits a lot of pressure treated stuff, which is pretty hard. But I'll tell you guys, if, if you've never seen the, the wood they use in Australia or the wood that he has in Australia, I mean, it's, it's almost no comparison. So people see it and they say, oh, wow, he took a, a warp or whatever. You have to understand what he's hitting. I mean, he's hitting something that we don't have. Like, I don't have any of that here. 
I could walk all through Massachusetts and not find a single piece of wood as hard as what the Concerned Aussie hits every single day. So you got to take that into kind of consideration. If he had a harder knife, who knows? Maybe you'd, instead of a little bend, he'd have a little chip, right? This one I know isn't chipping. And every single video I've done, I, there's no editing. I don't edit my videos. You guys know that. I, if I screw up, it's it's on video. I don't I don't try to sugarcoat anything I do. I don't try to hide anything I do. I even brought this one out because I did that four by four challenge with this, and I took it out and I bang in, in not too long ago, actually a week ago, um, before I left for the Carolinas, I took this out to baton with. Tell me if you see any warps in this blade, right? I use it for what they're intended to be used for, right? I'm not doing anything goofy with it. There's the there's the tip. Right? That's the way it came. That's the shape it came in. So um, there's nothing nothing wrong with this, but I don't do anything crazy like hit steel drums and I don't have the kind of wood. <laughs> Those guys in Australia got good wood. I don't have the kind of wood that they have to deal with in Australia. I have things that you can cut with a knife, with, a, with an edge of a knife. Um, so you have to understand it. So if you're seeing Concerned Aussie's video and you're thinking he's being some kind of, if it's like a hit or disrespect, or, don't. The guy's being completely honest. And um, it's hard for us to gauge what that means because he's hitting stuff that we don't have. Steel drums we have, we just don't hit them with knives. <laughs> um, but we don't have the kind of wood he's hitting. So it's a little bit different, a little bit different. Um, having this soft spine, it takes away a lot of shock when I hit. So I love chopping with this knife. I love it with that knife. With all with all my KHHI knives, they're made to chop and it takes away a lot of the vibration. So when people talk about hot spots and things like that, say, you know, everybody that's tested a, one of one of my designs from KHHI, they say, or they never say, yeah, the only problem is the hot spots. No, there's no hot spots because you're getting so much comfort in the swing due to the soft spine. Just like with a with a tops, if I took the Tahoma field knife and chopped with it, I'm not getting hot spots on a Tahoma field knife because it's quelling all that um, vibration. It's doing its job. Um, can I bend a tops? Yeah, absolutely. Can I bend it back? Sure, I can. Um, it's the same thing with one of these. Like I don't have any warps because I use it for its intended purpose. If you use these knives for their intended purpose, you're not gonna have any problems at all. I mean, no problems. You go all day long with one of these knives, and you're not gonna have a problem. And you can tell by the scratches. I go all day long with these knives and there's no freaking problem. There's no issues. So remember, be good to your knives. Understand the heat treat. When you buy a knife, you have to understand why it's treated the way it is, how it's treated, what it's treated for. Once you do that, then there's no way you'll ever miss buy another knife, right? Just like we talk about the Schrade Leroy with the, the hollow grind. If you take that and you chop and you turn, you're going to break your blade and you're going to say, oh my God, this is the cheapest knife I ever had in my life. But if you use it the way it's supposed to be used, it'll last forever. And you're going to say, it's the greatest knife I ever had in my life. It just comes down to using the knife the way it's supposed to be used um, and understanding how it's made. I understand how a katana is made. I understand how a claymore is made. They're not going to be the same blade. They're not going to be swung the same. They're not going to be treated the same way. I get it. But if you don't get it and you buy one thinking you can you can take a katana and swing it like a claymore and start smashing into the side of a tree, and then you're going to wonder why your, your katana is like this. You can fix it. It's not hard. But you're going to wonder and you're going to say, well, this is stupid. This is the cheapest. You might have a $10,000 katana. You bend it one time using it wrong. You're going to say, oh my God, these are cheap. No, they're not cheap. You screwed up. You screwed up. So remember that. Um, be... Be mindful of what your knife is made to do what and how it's made to do it. Um, that's it. So concerned Aussie. This guy, uh, I don't want to hear anybody saying he did anything wrong by 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 uh, speaking the truth by saying and and the way and he said too, he said he talked to KHHI and they got back to him respectfully and he uses words like that. He, they respectfully, they explained it that uh, he had another knife that that took some pretty bad hits, but the knife they sold, was not made to be a hard use knife. It was made of like a, a mid steel, a soft steel. So it was it was made, I don't know if it's wall hanger made or just made for certain tasks, but it wasn't made to be a banger. And it says it right in the description where this one's made to be a, a banger. And <laughs> that's why I bang with it. Um, <laughs> you're welcome, girls. So, um, so that one took some damage. 
and it was explained to him why. And he says, okay, well, if I'd known that, I wouldn't have bought it. But that's the thing is he's very honest. He says, if I'd known that, and it, it was in the description, he's the one who said it was even in the description. He just either didn't read it all the way through or didn't process what the words were because he saw the knife. He saw that and he said, hey, okay, I like that. I'll, I'll buy that is what it is. The guy um, is awesome. He's worth the sub. And um, I have a feeling he's going to be making some some more really good videos, uh, even if even if he's unhappy with the turnout of of what happened. He understands why now he gets it. He the guy completely gets it. And when people are saying, oh, this he's saying, well, yeah, but, you know, this I did do this. So he's he's saying, well, you know, yeah, OK, you're right. It's it shouldn't have happened, but it happened or it wouldn't have happened if I didn't do this. And he says it straight out. So I have a ton of respect for that guy. And if anybody has a problem with him, come see me because I'll have a problem with you. Um, so there it is. That's the difference between a through heat treat and a differential heat treat. And if you think I'm lying, call Tops and ask him why their knives aren't pieces of crap, even though they have the same heat treat. Imagine that. Okay, so that's it. This was... I didn't expect this thing to go 16 minutes long, but it did because I'm Italian and all I do is this. I am Donnie Bioli. Until next video.